Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Lauren. Welcome to the California State Railroad Museum located in Old Sacramento. I'm very excited to be joining you through the Ports Home Learning Program this morning. Earlier in the week, our museum did reclose due to state and local health directives, but that doesn't stop us from sharing with you some of the cool things that we have going on in the museum. So today, it is just us. And if you are out there and you are a third, fourth, fifth, or sixth grader, can you put the hand up? Let's see if we have any third, fourth, fifth, or sixth graders. All right, I see two so far, three. All right, we're up to six, awesome. Well, welcome everybody. I hope that you brought your brain power this morning because I have a riddle for you. We're gonna start off with a riddle. What starts with T, ends with T, and has T in it? What starts with T, ends with T, and has T in it? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'll be right back. All right, are we ready for the answer? Maybe some of you got it. Our answer is a teapot. Starts with tea, ends with tea, and has tea in it. Now, you might be wondering, hey, I signed up for a Zoom about trains. Why are we talking about teapots? Well, uh, a steam locomotive is kind of like a giant teapot on wheels. They both use heat energy to heat up water, and that steam locomotive uses that energy to move, whereas our teapot uses that energy to heat up water to make maybe some English breakfast tea. And maybe some of you have heard a whistling tea kettle. When there is enough pressure built up in here, you hear that whistle and you see the jet of steam saying that your tea is ready. And speaking of English breakfast tea, uh, the first steam locomotives were invented in England in the early 1800s. Um, George Stephenson created the first locomotive to run on rails, and it looked a little something like this. This was made in 1814, and it was designed to haul coal. It carried 30 tons of coal, 450 feet up a hill at four miles per hour. Now, steam locomotives have come a long way since then. Um, in the 1800s, they were used in factories, mines, farming, and other forms of transportation like steamboats. It was one of the most important and most useful inventions of the Industrial Revolution. And the invention of the steam locomotive made for much quicker transportation and movement of resources. So today we're going to explore how that steam power works and I wanna share with you one of the steam locomotives that we have on display here at the California State Railroad Museum. So we're gonna go on a little journey here. Behind me, you've been taking a look at a beautiful locomotive um, named the Sonoma Number no. 12. And it was built in 1876 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia for the North Pacific Coast Railroad. And there aren't photographs of the Sonoma's early history uh, but the engine is believed to have pulled both passenger and freight trains between Sausalito and Duncan Mills in Sonoma County, which is where it got its name, the Sonoma. And by the end of 1879, the Sonoma was sold to the Nevada Central Railroad. And when the company went bankrupt, it was kept by its general manager. In 1938, it was taken to the Southern Pacific shops in Berkeley where it was restored. And it got some time in the limelight appearing in reenactments of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. And the Sonoma was painted to resemble the Jupiter, the locomotive sent to the last spike ceremony in Utah to represent the Central Pacific Railroad. In 1940, the Sonoma completed its service and it was placed in storage in the San Francisco Bay Area. And the California State Railroad Museum acquired it in 1978 when it was donated by the J.M. Hiskey family and it's been restored to its original appearance. Now I'm gonna pass you off to my coworker Saba here who's helping us out today. Hi all. <laughs> and I would like you to put the hand up if when we walked around that locomotive, you noticed what it used for fuel. Go ahead and put your hand up if you saw that fuel source. 
six, seven, eight. Okay. Six, seven, eight. So let's come a little closer. Maybe you noticed in the back that it was carrying wood. And it was designed to run on wood because it was designed to run in the west coast of the United States, where there was a lot of access to lumber. And if you didn't see the lumber being carried, you might have also known that it ran on wood uh, because of the shape of the smokestack. Locomotives that run on wood have this large bulbous shaped smokestack that we call a balloon stack. Um, and that is because when you burn wood, it sends up large amounts of sparks. And so the shape of this helps to contain the sparks. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but the locomotives that were made to run on coal had a very different looking um, smokestack or chimney that was a straight up and down cylinder. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the parts of this locomotive. And we're gonna start right over here. So we have some of our basic parts laid out and we are going to assemble it. Now, first we have our cab here and the cab is what holds the two or more people required to operate the locomotive. So they would be inside the cab. Next, we have our driving wheel where the power of movement goes to make that locomotive go forward. We have our fire box, which is where the fuel is added to make the fire and get that heat going. The body of it, this is called the boiler and the name kind of gives it away. That is carrying water and the fire box is going to heat up the water in that boiler. Now our locomotive is getting pretty heavy here. So we need something to stabilize it in the front. We have our lead wheels and this is called a cow catcher. Put those in the front. This is a very important piece we'll talk more about later, but it is called the steam dome. Right up top in front of the cab there. We have our large balloon chimney or smokestack. This right here is another one of those key pieces called the cylinder. We'll talk about the cylinder more as we do a walk around, but that steam pressure ends up going into the cylinder. And in that cylinder, we have what's called a piston that attaches to the piston rod, which connects to our driving wheel. And then we have a few more accessories here. We have the bell on top to warn of a train in motion. And we have our headlight as well that often has uh, a design or the number on it. Okay, so here are the basic parts of a steam locomotive. And now we're gonna take a look at the real thing. So starting right down here, this carriage is called the tender. And all of the fuel and water that the locomotive needs to run has to be carried with it. So in this tender, we have the lumber and it also carries water. And the person that you see here, his job is to be the fireman. He adds fuel and monitors the fire. And what he does with that log is he would open that metal door that you see right in front of you. That is the fire door, puts the log through the fire hole and it ends up in the fire box. And again, you were just looking inside the cab of our locomotive. And we have another, another man here. This is our engineer, the very important job of driving, running the train and monitoring the pressure. So that lumber was put into the firebox and you can see our firebox down here. It is sucking up air, burning the fire nice and hot. And that heat energy is then transferred up to our boiler. You can see the body of the boiler. So the smoke from that fire is going to run through the boiler and out the chimney or the smokestack. And meanwhile, all of that water in there is getting superheated. And when that water changes to steam, turns into a gas, it expands. So we have a lot of pressure built up. And that pressure goes up into our steam dome, which is one of those important pieces right in front of the cab. And a few things on the steam dome. The engineer has some control. But he can pull a safety valve to let out some of that built up pressure. If too much pressure is built up, there's the potential for an explosion. So that safety valve is very important to let out some pressure. 
We also have the whistle up top, which can be heard from uh, long distances and they can send messages that trains are arriving. And the engineer can also pull a valve to send that super pressurized steam up to the front of our train to our next very important part. So that steam travels through the boiler and down into the cylinder. And in our cylinder, we have a part called the piston, which is pushed back and forth by that high pressure steam. And there's a valve that can control which side of the piston the, the new steam is being fed into. And attached to the piston is the piston rod, which is then attached to the driving rod which then goes on our large driving wheel. And in our little demo, there is only one driving wheel, but this one, we can see that there are two and there are two on the other side as well. So we have four driving wheels, taking the energy from that pressurized steam, pushing the piston and pushing the rods and it turns it into the back and forth motion, turns into a circular motion to start our train movement. Now, a few other things we have that we haven't talked about yet. Right up in the middle, we see the number 12 on a, a second dome. This is the sand dome. And sand is kept inside there. And it can travel down this pipe here. And it can be placed right onto the track in a fine layer in front of the driving wheel. And that helps give some traction when the locomotive is first starting. And also, if it was going uphill carrying a heavy load. It helps give some fraction and uh, something to stick onto the track and get moving there. And we also have the bell up in front of the sand dome to warn the train is passing through if you're going through a, an area where there might be people. And we talked about our balloon stack earlier and that used up steam is also fed out through that stack along the Nope. And then right in front here, we have our leading wheels and our cow catcher. And the cow catcher can be used to push obstacles off of the track that could derail the train. Maybe it's a cow, but it could also be a fallen tree branch or maybe even small amounts of snow. So those are the basic parts on our steam locomotive, the Sonoma. And I'm gonna take you back real quick here. And we're gonna do a little pop quiz about two of the parts that we just talked about. Right, so our first question, what does the safety valve in the steam dome do? Does that safety valve make sure the locomotive doesn't go too fast? Turn on the lights so the locomotive can run in the dark. Allows high pressure steam to escape to prevent an explosion or make sure cows stay off the tracks. What does the safety valve in the steam dome do? Go ahead and make your selections and then push the submit button so that we can see it. Give you another, oh, okay, we're ready. All right, nice job, 100%, 15 of you. Thank you for following along. Got it right. That safety valve lets out that high pressure steam. And in the early 1800s, when they were developing this steam technology, there were frequent boiler explosions in the United States and the United Kingdom. So it was a pretty dangerous job to be some of the early firemen and engineers working on these locomotives. But over time, as our safety maintenance and technology has improved, um, these types of accidents have been reduced. Ah, okay. And we I have one more question for you. 100% on the first one, let's see. Round two, our next question is, what part is pushed from side to side by high pressurized steam in the cylinder? Hmm, is it the bell, the piston, the smoke regulator, or the pressure cooker? What part is pushed from side to side by high pressurized steam in the cylinder? And again, push that submit button, let's see. Nice, so 12 of you got it. It was indeed the piston, good job. And that can be kind of hard to imagine how that works because it's all happening inside the boiler and inside the cylinder. 
So I'm gonna pass you back off to Saba here. And we have just now the outline of our steam locomotive. And as we know, it runs on wood. So that wood is being added into our firebox. And that air is coming up from underneath to create our hot fire. Running through the boiler are tubes. And as that smoke hot air passes through the tubes and out of the smokestack, that is what is heating the water in the boiler around it, as well as from the heat from the firebox. Now, if you remember that high pressure steam goes up to our steam dome, our engineer inside pulls the lever, the valve to send that steam, maybe some extra steam out the top with the safety valve, or maybe it goes up to the front into our cylinder where we have that piston going side to side, connected to the driving rods that are moving our driving wheels. So now we have motion, wheels are turning, train is moving forward, excess steam is coming out of the smokestack and we have motion, full steam ahead. All right, I'm gonna take you back for a moment. Uh -huh. Perfect, because I wanna tell you a little bit more about the locomotives that we have at the Railroad Museum and get a little bit of a higher vantage point. So in our collection, the Railroad Museum has 19 steam locomotives and they're from 1862 to 1944. And not all of them are on view on display at the Railroad Museum at one time. Currently we have six out on the floor that you can see and the others, they are in our shop facility and they're either being restored or repaired or waiting to be restored. And you can see behind me where we are in our roundhouse, where we have some room to bring in more cars or locomotives so we can keep switching up the displays and the neat things that we have out on the floor here. Now you might be wondering uh, what has happened to steam and steam locomotives. Well, they're not completely gone, but they are less common. Uh, the steam engine was replaced by the internal combustion engine using gas and diesel. Some of the downsides of steam is that it requires a lot of maintenance and labor to run, and that can get very expensive. And it's also less efficient than the diesel locomotives. But these steam engines aren't gone completely. They're still running. Uh, the Railroad Museum runs the Granite Rock 10 as a steam, it is a steam locomotive, and it is an excursion train that goes along the Sacramento River. You can also, around the world, there are different historic and tourist trains. And one of those is the Hogwarts Express tourist train. You can indeed ride it. And whatever adventures you decide to go on in the muggle world, I hope that you keep checking out the California State Parks ports programs for more adventures around your state parks. And when you are in Old Sacramento, you can come give us a visit at the California State Railroad Museum. Check our website for our reopening status, um, as well as digital exhibits and more information. There's a lot more information about the Sonoma as well as the other locomotives that we have in our collection. And the next time you have a cup of tea, tell the person that you're with a thing or two that you know about steam engines. Thank you for joining me, everybody.